two uninhabited Pacific islands. More than 5,000 miles from the UK. One will be inhabited by 14 British men. Go, go, go! While a separate island will be home to 14 British women. For six weeks, they'll be utterly alone. Holy shit! With only the clothes they stand up in and a handful of basic tools. Filming everything themselves. When pushed to the limits of human endurance. So thin now. Will it be brute power? Three. Or mental strength that wins the day? Watch him, watch him. Go now, go now. Who will have what it takes to stay alive? Tonight, we follow the women's island. Oh, my God, there's Cayman. <gasps> oh, my God. Survival will be harder than ever. They'll have to make fire, hunt for food, and find water. Oh. Living on the island in the middle of tropical storm season. I'm still wet. Worst night's sleep. Like, surely I'm going to die soon. Hang on! Oh, shit! No, no. When pitted against the extremes of nature, these Monday women got what it takes to survive. <gasps> Just remember to how you felt when you felt shit and leave it there. <laughs> It's been seven days since 14 British women were marooned on a remote Pacific island. What? A huge snake came towards me! It's my f***ing hands! Brutal conditions have already claimed two victims. I need to go. It's been with my family. And the group paid the price when they split to find a sustainable water source. We cannot walk anywhere on this island without getting lost. Radioing now. Oh. Magic now. Hello! Finally reunited after three days apart. <laughs> I can't believe it. The women find themselves on the northern tip of the island. They have no water source and many haven't had a drop to drink for two days. Yo, dudes. Hi. <gasps> it's sunny. The sun is blaring so hot. There is no outside input, and it is up to us to survive and thrive. That is a heck of a challenge. Oh my gosh. Despite the oppressive 30 degree heat, there's something to celebrate for one of the party. If you'd have asked me a year ago where I would be spending my 25th birthday, I definitely would not have been saying, oh, my 25th birthday will be spent abandoned on an island, dehydrated and, and starving. For the last five days, the women have barely eaten and had hardly anything to drink. Finding water is a priority. I just want a drink. I just want a drink. The only reason we're not thinking about food is because yeah. we're so thirsty. Our body basically tries and, like, compensates for everything that we're lacking. When it comes to survival, I often talk about the rule of three, which means you can survive three minutes without air, three days without water, three weeks without food. And in temperatures like this, the women have got to drink a lot, between two and four litres of water a day. If they don't, they're finished. That is a clear blue sky. The sun obviously makes you feel more dehydrated and more weak. Without a sustainable water source, they are surviving on rainwater. But there hasn't been a drop for 48 hours. Looking at the sea, you just want to drink the seawater. Keep dreaming about Diet Iron Brew. <laughs> cold, freezing cold Diet Iron Brew with ice. Oh my God, my other birthdays, and I'm stressing out because no one's got me a card or no one's come out for a meal, and now I'm just going to be happy with some, a piece of fruit and some water. <laughs> <laughs> I think a bogey just came out of my nose. <laughs> eat it, eat it, eat it! Waste nothing! <laughs> a 
I've always loved adventure. In December 2013, I set off on transatlantic rowing race, 3,000 miles across to Antiguan. The 30th of January, and we have just had a capsize. I have split my head open. I didn't want to give up. It's been 96 days of pushing my body and pushing my mind further than I ever had before, but we still had to give up. So that's hard to come to terms with. I will not get off the island. I have to prove to myself that I can do it. Happy birthday, Lauren, superwoman. <laughs> She's keeping us all it's sane. Not. She's keeping us all sane. Celebrations are short-lived. The women have a life or death priority. Seeing the effect that dehydration has, I couldn't really have predicted that it could be so disabling. We ain't coming back until we found water. Georgie leads a group on a scouting mission into the thick jungle. There are no pools, which is what we're after. I've made sure that the island's got enough water, indigenous animals and vegetation on it to keep them alive, but only if they've got the ingenuity to find it, catch it and kill it. That's quite a deep pool, it's empty. It's just the same shit. If we don't find water, we're screwed. What is that? Oh, my God, there's two piglets! Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, my God. Be careful, cos it's Mum's name. I can actually see Mum over here. Oh, oh, careful, yeah. come, come, away, come away. If Mum thinks the kids are threatened, that's when they get really aggressive. She's lying down. Come away, sweetheart. She's massive. She's enormous. She's, like, really near. The piglets. The first thing I thought of was crackling, to be honest. I am hungry. I don't think I could look into his little piggy eyes and then kill him. I'm not ready for that yet. But then again, by the time I come home, I'll probably be a full-blown fucking, I don't know, cannibal. The pigs are given a reprieve. Right now, everyone's lives depend on finding water. What are we going to do? You can sit oh. down. Oh. 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 We're all buggered. No energy to move. Brian? It's all right. Are you OK? What's wrong? Whenever I stand up, I just see all black. It's so black feeling. That's dehydration, babe. The situation is now critical. We're going foraging. Water. <sighs> In a do-or-die attempt to find water... Please be careful. Georgie and Fee strike out in the midday sun. <laughs> I just think, I just couldn't sit and wilt in that sun down there. The weather here is brutal. You know, you've got 90% plus humidity. The heat here is oppressive. So finding that fresh water source is vital. The bottom line is, you go three days without it, you're dead. So hot today. So, so hot. Microwave. I think we should look on here and then go back. Really fast. Ooh. It's water. Ah, this looks good. Jesus Christ! We did it! Oh yeah, baby. I don't give a fuck where that came from. Do you? We're drinking it. Oh! Amazing. So, we hit the jackpot. Pick this out. OK, it's not over yet. Huh? You know what? If I die, I don't care. At least I don't die thirsty. Obviously, rain itself is drinkable without purification. But once it hits the ground, it becomes contaminated. 
all sorts of bacteria and nasties there. And no matter how clean the water looks, you've got to boil it. Guess what I've got? Water! Oh, yeah! Oh, I'm not going to lie to you. You drink it at your own risk. It came from a waterfall, and it tastes fine. Don't drink it. Every water from waterfall, river, whatever, has to be filtered and boiled. Because of the parasites, it's just, it's, it's a death trap. Com complete. The whole island is a death trap. The thing is, then, we need to get this fire started, because if we don't get this fire started, we're back to zero again. We're back to no fucking water. They haven't been able to start a fire for three days. If they're to survive, this is their last chance. Oh I won't stop until the fire is ready, because then I know that we can drink. Yeah. Just go through that smoke. Pretend it's not even smoking. So I think we've got it. I think we've got it. Okay, stop. stop. Okay, that's that's it. Really again, hard. again. Yeah. It's got enough. Yeah. 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 Well done. Yeah. We just taste the water. Ah, look, 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 look. Look at that fire. The water won't be safe to drink until it is boiled some three hours later. Meanwhile, Lauren's keeping the fire going. The fire is so hot, it's yeah. burning through everything. The birthday girl yeah. is doing all the hard work and she's exhausted. I'd say that Lauren and Beth, Lauren and Beth are had... always first in there to help. Also, they think of things. <laughs> oh shit! Lauren, Lauren, come this way, this way, this way. Go into the sea now. Fucking hell! Shit! She opened the lid and it just exploded in our face. Oh fuck! Right in there, babe. Get her right immersed in the sea. Jesus! Oh fuck! Day seven on the island, and Lauren's been tending a jerry can of boiling water on the fire. She opened the lid and it just exploded in our face. Jesus! What's happened? What's happened? The pressure of the jerry can exploded. How are you feeling? Okay. Stay there for now, keeping the water. For the moment, Dr. Belinda can't tell how badly scalded Lauren is. What you say is to run whatever it is under cold water for exactly. We'll see the extent of it in a minute. Just everything seems to be yeah, going a bit quick. It's just taking from the same as well. She says Lauren's like one of our strongest yeah. people. So if, if she goes down, I think it'd be a big detriment to us. It's like doing your water on your engine. You've got to let it cool down before you open the top top uh, screw top. If her burns prove to be severe, Lauren may have to be evacuated. Poor Lauren, she's not having the best birthday ever, is she? Dehydrated and now scalded by boiling water. I'm just going to keep dampening you and letting it cool. Hopefully she will uh, be back to full strength soon. Lauren's face isn't scalded, and Dr Belinda believes she can treat the burns on her arm. That's in the blistered area. That's the worst bit. It feels like someone is singeing my arm with a hot poker. I will not let people see that I'm feeling just as weak as them because I actually feel like some people need strength in other people to keep them going, and I'm determined to be that person. Still alive! <laughs> I'm still standing. Despite the jerry can exploding, just enough water remains for everyone to have a life-saving drink. Pick your own bottle, lost it all the same. Um, you just used it. No, one. I asked for whiskey and coke. <laughs> oh, I've went for some aloe vera original drink, and aloe vera is disgusting. I tried it with a detox, and it's, it tastes like sperm. Now they have a water source, food should be the women's big priority. Biggie, biggie, biggies. Hello. All they've eaten in a week are a few handfuls of yucca and coconut. 
We've got two of the cutest little piglets here. Their little tails wag like dogs are so cute. Yes! Everything that moves on that island really should be seen as a potential source of food, and that includes the pigs. Oh, you're so cute. Come here, Sage. <laughs> To befriend them is just going to make the decision to kill them a thousand times more difficult. And really, in survival, there's no room for sentiment. Sorry, I'm just being joined here. I can hear you squeaking. What are you squeaking about? And everyone's like, oh, they're so cute, they're so cute. I'm going to eat them as pets. And I'm just thinking, you know, fuck that girl. Like, we're literally going to slice and dice those piggies. Definitely, we're eating them. Suckling pig. Nah. Would you not eat them? No, they're so cute. Would. I don't care that they're cute. As the time goes on, we'll be hungrier and hungrier, but I am not killing the little piglets and eating them. No way. They're so funny. I've been a vegetarian basically since I was born. I think it's going to be a massive challenge if I have to by choice, eat meat. But then again, maybe it's not going to be a choice because I'll be so starving and I'll just have to eat it. <laughs> I would definitely say I'm an animal person rather than a people's person. You know, animals are less stressful sometimes. I will train them pigs. I'll kick them up the arse. <laughs> the moral argument is, is do we now eat the pigs? But then do you kill, essentially, your pet? Piggy, piggy, piggies. Sagey, onion. With water running low... Careful, these rocks are uber-fucking-slippy. An expedition party makes the hazardous journey back to the waterfall. That's it, guys, we're nearly there. Jamie. Hang on! Oh! Shit! I saved the camera! Good job! <laughs> That's it there! Shit, doesn't look like it's running. Fuck's sake. No! I don't understand. This was pouring with water the other day. And it's dry. The water source may be dry, but fortunately in the tropics, the weather can change in an instant. Look at that. I've seen such a dirty grey cloud as that. Let's get water quick before they crash. Can you pass me the bottle one by one and pass them over to me? Violent Pacific storms can dump an inch of water in an hour. The women need to take their chances when they can. Whoa, 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 whoa! We need to try and protect the fire! The wood's getting saturated. They're using Georgie's poncho to save the fire, but half the group is tied up trying to collect rainwater. I can't believe this. How disorganised can they be? Oh, no, piggies! Hey! Oh, Ow. they're getting shelter. Ah. Oh, it's cooking itself, really. Want to roast themselves? Let them roast themselves. <gasps> is that a tornado? Oh, what is it? Wow. <laughs> you want to see what's out there, girls? It's what? like a big thing in the sky. No. Honestly, I've never seen anything like it. Oh, if that touches down, we're in trouble. Oh, my God. At their worst, water tornadoes are capable of travelling up to 150 miles an hour. If this hits the island, it could destroy everything in its path. It's like one of those. It's growing as well. It is growing. Well, that's pretty scary. Um, we're really vulnerable here and no-one can get to anything like that happens. So. Oh, hang on. Is it dissipating or is it just curving? Seems to just split up and go. We get to live another day. Shame. While they've kept the fire alight, they've hardly collected any water. 
Is that the total amount of what we've just got for yeah. that rainfall? I am struggling. But as much as we nest here, Mother Nature turns up and she just shits on it. And it's like a fucking mudslide everywhere now. It's become clear to the women they can't survive here on Coconut Beach. They must move camp. Whoa! Five days ago, the women discovered a beach on the western side of the island with a sustainable water source nearby. They christened it Home Beach. Now Lauren wants to take everyone back there. You need to get to that home beach now. The beach, the water, it's just going to make people feel like they can actually do this. I'm pretty confident in, the, in where that beach is. We do have a serious problem with water. Hopefully home beach is going to sort all that out. There's yeah. a stream there. Yeah, and it's just the, like, resources. We can start making our shelters. Yeah. You guys haven't seen it yet either, have yeah. you? So I've got this image of Good. this beach that flows for, like, miles, palm trees, hammocks, uh, shelter, waterfall, fish yeah. jumping from the sea. In the yeah, we saw that. Ocean. We can see that. Oh, I'm so excited. What's the plan with the fire, guys? I was just going to try say, and transport it. We haven't got anything metal, have we, yet? So we'll just have to light another one. So right, we're experts yeah. now. I'm excited. It's, it's going to be eight. Who would like the first oh, snail? Oh! Sage and onion remain off the menu. Tonight it's just forage snails. It tastes quite salty, quite meaty, and then there's this sharp, like, shit, basically. <laughs> and a good meal always prompts a lively conversation. Is that it? Yeah. That's it. It's small. <laughs> I had the South African with the tiny little penis. It was definitely a micro penis because it's it was like smaller than my pinky. Like, like you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was smaller than my pinky. Like seriously, bear. It's not even funny. <laughs> I really feel, feel for them because no girl could feel that inside them. <laughs> no. Can you imagine? No matter how tight you so are. So what's the point? One guy who I was dating it just felt like a little twiggler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the good thing is that they're often really good at cunnilingus. <laughs> and then you have to get special condoms because they're so small and it's just going to slip off otherwise. So, Do you actually get special condoms for them? You can, yeah. <laughs> 6 30 a.m., day nine. Honestly, adorable. I'm seeing this about a pig. <laughs> you do get oh, and they're pig. very cute. It's just made me happy. Today, the women face an arduous trek, seeking the beach where they want to build a permanent camp. What do you think, Jamie? What? So we're cracking these open to get a mouthful of coconut before we set off. No, no, it's too heavy. There's loads there. Oh, I really want a coconut. I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry, but someone's just said no. I want you to just take your backpack off and I'm going to give it to Jamie. It's a hard walk and you will find it difficult. With very little water for the trek, Abby and Belinda are especially concerned about PhD student Fran. I know she's not well. She doesn't want to make a fuss and she doesn't, want, doesn't want to stop leave this. the island. Five days ago, she collapsed and received emergency medical treatment. I'm really worried about Fran. Every time she tries to do something, she's feeling lightheaded and dizzy. She's already passed out once due to low blood sugar. So clearly her body's not very good at adapting to this. Should we uh, make you the bow carrier? This is actually the most important thing yes. ever. Yes. I feel like the weakest person in the group, because everyone, even though they're really tired, they can keep going. As I've said before, I just feel like another mouth to feed. Harvela is reluctant to leave Sage and Onion behind. Oh, oh no, he's tangled oh, on him. Well, OK, Jesus. we'll just grab him. The wild animals, they just need to be left alone. I wanted to try. We can't take the pigs. Guys, we're going to home beach. Woo! Bye, Sage. Bye, Onion. Bye, dinner. Bye, lunch. <laughs> We look like survivors. Nine AM, the women depart for home beach. 
The last time they went into the jungle, they were lost for three days. We're going down, Lauren. This time, 25-year-old nurse Lauren leads the way. I think we're just going to, like, head on this bridge thing. Julie, how are you feeling? Fuck off. Fuck off? Yeah, that's how I'm feeling. <laughs> After just half an hour, Becky's in trouble. Hold up, guys. She's got a dry mouth. My water bottle allocation for the day is almost done. How's everyone doing? Energy levels zero. The move will eat into the women's fragile energy reserves, but it's a gamble they must take, whatever the consequences. Take five. Hey! So shit. If this rain keeps on going, I feel like I'm on the brink of collapsing again. I just, I don't want to tell anyone because I feel so pathetic. I know I can do this, but I just, I just need to keep going. With the group exhausted, Lauren and Fee volunteer to scout ahead. Anyone want a biscuit? Yeah, Press a oh, my God. oh, you bitch! Just oh, a little biscuit. A biscuit. <laughs> just a little bob. <laughs> The advance party are pushing ahead through the jungle. I think we may have found it. We have! This is it! I know. This is our beach! Oh, my God. So excited. I feel a surge of energy. I can hear the sea! Oh, wow! That is amazing! I just think paradise compared to where we've been. The sea looks bluer, everything looks better. Everything. Our pigs! The pigs! Yay! They've traipsed all that way after us. I don't know whether I could eat them now. Aww. Glad they came. They love us. What the hell? Ketchup. Um, a ketchup bottle, and I just think that's a sign. The journey has beaten Fran. This beach is extra cold because it's kind of like open. I don't think, feel like I can do anything in this weather because I can't move. A little bit damp. Oh, thank you so much, Bobby. Oh, I love you. Coming through the jungle again today in pouring rain has tipped her over the edge. She's been proper poorly. She's cold all the time. And so when we're cold, it's for her, it's like bloody hypothermia. When you're wet, you're malnourished, your body temperature just is going to drop and it only takes a two-degree drop to take you right bang into that danger zone for hypothermia. So the women have an uphill struggle getting Fran warm. I am on firewood duty. We need to get dry firewood. Nothing is dry. There's just no dry standing wood. Um, it's not a little bit wet, honestly. The place is just sodden with water. I don't feel that... I could cope with another rainstorm. I don't think I'm medically fit for this. It really is torture for Fran. She clearly is not a well person. I don't even have any sort of rescue meds, so if she were to collapse, it would take a while to get any further medical help to us. Stop, stop, brother. This is uh, brother Wonga Fran now feels she has no option. My body can't take it anymore, over. Do you then want to take off the island? Yes, please, over. I hope I like you feel so much better, honey. Mm, I think I, I think you might have died if you stayed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm serious. Oh, no, thank you. I all think doomed. I would as well. <laughs> I am absolutely gutted. I absolutely love Fran. She's ace. She's our little baby. It's going to be my 
my first challenge ever that I for myself did. And I'm, kind of, I'm really gutted that I couldn't complete it. It's kind of heartbreaking. I tried so hard. Fran, bye, my darling. We love you. We love you. Another one down. Now we need to go and anchor the others to trees and make sure none of the others are thinking of leaving. To lose another team member is so demoralising and you can just feel the atmosphere in camp at the minute is just on tenterhooks and everyone's thinking, I don't know how long I can keep going like this. Look at this shit. I know. What the hell's gone on? The storm and an extreme high tide have washed up a potential treasure trove. Like Paradise Beach, no longer. <gasps> Alarm, half a hair clip. Ta -da! Not only is it a can, it's a can with a lid. I think one of the real unsung heroes in the survivor's arsenal is resourcefulness. What's that? Is that Iron Brew? Oh my god! Oh my god! I thought it was Iron Brew. Oh my god. Here, here, hold that, hold that. I oh thought god. it was Iron Brew. Oh my god. Wait, check What's the sell by date. I don't care. Oh my god! Oh my god! So powerfully sweet, so sugary, like syrup, and it was just heaven, absolute heaven. <laughs> Literally just a drop on my tongue, and it it felt like ecstasy, absolute ecstasy. Women hope the wood is now dry enough to somehow light a fire to purify the water from a nearby pond. This is filled up good. Yeah, Thank God for that. Thank God. Oh my God! Oh my God! Did you see a fire starter? Wait, hold on. We haven't hit a fire yet. This is this is like so early. Please don't go out, please don't go out. It's too fucking wet. Shit, what are we gonna do? Good work, Georgie. Nothing happens without fire. It's, 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 it's an in inverted triangle. Fire. And everything comes off of the fire, that's it. Without fire, we are. I don't have any survival skills, but I'm absolutely happy to step up to the plate if a crocodile needs killing or a snake needs its head chopping off. And I think the key to our survival on the island is teamwork. I was actually caught in the tsunami in Sri Lanka. We didn't eat or sleep for four days. So I have an understanding of what that mental pressure is. Am I just not putting enough pressure on it? I think I'm not putting enough pressure on it. Hard as she tries, Georgie can't get it to light. Even now the wood is drier. What's up, Jules? It's half past two now. No sign of a fire. There's hardly any spindle left, is there? I know, that's the thing. That's probably why it's flicking off. Just give it another go. Nice and slow. That's it. Keep it like that. The battle for an ember continues through the night. We're all getting a little bit panicked. We're starving and thirsty. Like, surely I'm going to die soon. Fucking stupid place. The women have now been without water for more than 48 hours and they are dangerously dehydrated. I feel really drained and really faint. Dead. Dead. Okay, to you, Lauren. Me? You. Me. Oh, fuck off! It wasn't like that time, I'm sure. I think we've lost this one, haven't we? So, this bow drill set, really, all the parts need to be in perfect proportion for this to work. The problem is, the women's drill is now too small because it's been so used. They need to start again. Their situation is now beyond critical. Oh, fuck. I feel so dizzy. It's 
fucking hard work when you've not drunk anything and the heat. I'm really struggling. It feels like my purpose on this island is just to be dehydrated. <laughs> Pot shot to Bravo One over. I just wanted to let you know we need some supplies from you. Medical advice is that the castaways are now so critically dehydrated that within a few hours their lives will genuinely be in danger. So really, I've got no choice but to intervene. And the women will be given a working bow drill set. Right, fire startings, bitters. Let's do this. It's purring at you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Guys, woo! This is great. A blow now we can start thinking about the bigger things, like our bellies, for example. There's a little something down there which is sitting a bit dangerously close to the fire to me. This is amazing. <gasps> it's, it's cool and clear. And that view, I feel like we're in a luxury hotel, and then shortly our butler will come. What have you ordered for butler service? Ooh, oysters. Oh, no, not oysters. We can get them here. Oh, yeah. Think. Please, order something you can't oh. get here. What would be your first? A double cheeseburger. Absolute whopper with everything on it. I want to find out what you... Now, what have you ordered from our butler? From our room service, I've started with some... Deep... Well, sorry, it is seafood, actually. No, really? Some deep fried calamari. Uh, some... And then, for some weird reason, it's a bit like being pregnant, I want jelly and custard and ice cream. And I don't even like ice cream. But I would, I'd like, you know, jelly, custard and ice cream. And then, a kid's buffet. Oh, kid's buffet, I'm with you with that. Until I vomit. Day 12 on the island. The women now have fire and plenty of drinking water, but they're barely surviving on just 50 calories a day. It's took me, I don't know how many hours to get that many almonds. It's gonna be one almond if we're lucky. After almost two weeks without a meal, the group is at the point of starvation. If they don't eat soon, there's a genuine risk their organs will start to shut down. I'm fucking hungry. Um, my tummy has gone away. I literally have no tummy, look. <laughs> flat, 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 flat. My stomach's good. I'm gonna have to eat myself. Is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? Hi, sage and onion. <laughs> the fate of sage and onion hangs in the balance. The women have befriended them and now can't agree whether or not to eat them. I keep looking at those gorgeous pigs as bits of food. They're too cute. We can't, I can't. Now, imagine this. Barbecue sauce over the ribs, right? Barbecue sauce, barbecue sauce, barbecue sauce, right? Even the tail, really yeah. good, really chewy. I'd still eat it. I think we should spit roast in. Put a steak up through its bum, not through its mouth. It's really through its dead, of Obviously, I've got a completely different point of view to the rest of the girls because I don't eat meat, but sage and onion, the little piglets, I'm definitely not eating them. We've got two pigs, sage and onion, which have become our pet pigs. They followed us all the way from Coconut Beach here, uh, which is a long walk for little legs. They were thriving at the other beach. What's lacking here that they could get at the other beach? They were digging up lots of roots at the other beach. It was really muddy. So the water collected in the mud, whereas in the sand, water doesn't really collect. We have to set a limit to how much we do that compromises our resources over the pigs. Over the past few days, people have been laid down with double vision, 
retching and not being able to walk. Yeah. People are really suffering and you need to eat to survive. Nobody wants to kill anything, but we need to eat. Understandably, you know, a lot of people find the whole concept of killing animals, it's either cruel, it's upsetting, and yes, it's never pleasant to take a life, but in a survival situation, when it comes down to the wire, it's a simple choice, them or you. You're really upset, everybody's really upset. Can we show of hands that we agree that we do something soon? So, Jamie, wh where's your mind thinking at the moment? I don't want anything to do with this. Well, who's going to kill it? Well, that's the next question. I I'd help. have volunteered myself to do it. Awesome. Just because I know that I'll do it fast. I'm going to drink about it. It's crying out more than you're taking it. Oh, sorry. You see, it was wrong to all get attached to them, wasn't it? I always say, once you've named something, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. The reason I'm so upset is because they reminded me of my dog. And... I really thought we were going to have some until we left the island. It makes everything real. It makes everything, like, raw. Pretty raw, isn't it? Yes! It's raw. Um, I just want to make it the most, like, peaceful death. You know, like, if I was panicking, then it would feel that. If anyone seems a good whacker. I'm not annoyed at anybody. I just don't want to have any part of it. As long as I don't see it or hear it, it's just upsetting. Just gently holding out because I don't want him to struggle. I want him to be relaxed. But I tell you what, they've had a little better life than most pigs in captivity that are bred for pork. Pork we eat and the chops I buy and the sausages I buy. They've had no life at all. I don't know another pig that's gone to bed with a load of people. <laughs> Ready? Should race. Absolutely. Yeah. One, oh, two, three. <laughs> well, Lauren, absolutely amazingly well done. <laughs> He did the job really, really well, really well. It was quick, quick, and it was painless. That was pretty emotional, wasn't it? It was pretty horrible. <laughs> it's never easy to take a life, but having learned from this first kill, they actually dispatched the second animal swiftly, cleanly, no hesitation. Yeah, I'm glad it wasn't, it wasn't distress. Should we get it back and get it on the barbecue? <laughs> Never ever killed an animal before, especially as a, as a girl as well. Is that I don't think we're designed to want to kill anything, and that's what has been a huge learning curve for me. You know, it's reality. That's what it is. It's brutal reality that if you want to eat, then you are going to have to kill something. Gosh, Lauren, she's she's the first to volunteer for the pig. She's very matter of fact, very hard working. Actually, if I could channel a little bit of Lauren, I'd be very happy, because she's very impressive. We needed something that was going to kick starters into not viewing animals as pets, but rather as a way that is going to allow us to survive. You know, it's going to give us the energy that we need to get hunting, get finding water, to find wood, because that is all exhausting work. It's very sad, or if I'm perfectly, perfectly honest, I'm really looking forward to the meat because I think we're all in dying need of a bit of a meal. Harvey, yeah. just to let you know, the pig's on the fire. I'm not being a hypocrite. I'll look later. I'm just not ready. Thank you. There's no way I'm going in there until it's all done with. I wouldn't go in there. I'm not eating a pig. 
This is a really decisive moment in the women's struggle for survival. Now they have the mindset to progress as hunters and killers. They've actually crossed a very important psychological line. And for the first time, they're behaving like survivors. Are you ready, guys? Oh my God, it's unbelievably delicious. I don't like the fact that I'm eating the piggy, but it is good. Mm -hmm. I don't know about anyone else, but I feel like a wild animal. <laughs> like, sort like a cave woman. Do you think that tube is? It's testicle. I quite like things like that. Do you know what I mean? It's quite savage. We needed that. I'm not going to lie. It was gorgeous. Um, I could have ate it all myself. It's, uh, it's all good. That's it for now. Over and out. Next time on the island... You lazy bunch of bone idle bastards! We're not even halfway through, and tensions are beginning to fray. We're not all just grunts and bash on bits of wood. The sun would look like you didn't want to do a harder job. I would say fuck you to that person. Fucking calm down, eh? There is absolutely no food in this camp. This island is infested. Keep on! Round you, boys! Yeah!